Hello, my name is Jason Chanko and I'm the Applications Marketing Manager at Siglent Technologies. In today's video, we're going to take an SSA 3021X Spectrum Analyzer and we're going to go portable. We're going to actually connect it to an uninterruptible power supply disconnected from mains and an inverter in a vehicle. See how the data compares. So what kind of power options do we have? Mains, which is 60 Hz, 120 volt peak to peak sine wave here in North America. We've got uninterruptible power supplies or UPSs with simulated sine wave outputs as shown. And then we also have, for more rugged applications, inverters, which are generally attached to vehicles or other batteries for remote applications. Now let's take a closer look at the uninterruptible power supply. Here we've selected a cyber power with sine wave output. Uh, we recommend that no other devices are plugged in when using the inverter mode, which means the bet that it's the UPS is not connected to the wall, but it is free. Um, we noticed some very strange things with other peripherals attached at the same time as the analyzer. So just use the analyzer when connected to the uninterruptible power supply. Uh, again, the data seems to be okay using the uh, using the simulated sine wave output, but a true sine wave is going to be better. Now let's take a closer look at the power quality comparison. Here we've got a time domain or oscilloscope capture of the main 60 hertz. Note it's very smooth. The transitions between waveforms are very nice uh, and very periodic. Here we've got the UPS simulated 60 hertz and you can see that it's chopped a bit, stepped, and also has some overshoot in some various places. Not ideal, but Again, um, you'll see that the data does work well. Um, and then the automotive inverter, quite a bit more clean than the simulated 60 hertz, but a similar wave shape. But ultimately what matters is the quality of the data collected using each of these power sources. And now off to the lab for a little bit more measurements using mains power. We're going to take one of our arbitrary waveform generators and we're going to set up a sweep from 530 kilohertz to 1.7 megahertz, the AM band here, uh, broadcast band here in North America and we're going to configure that amplitude to minus 15 dBm. Here I've got a little fat finger action here, uh, and there we go. Finally get the dBm set up, and now we're going to enable the spectrum analyzer to, uh, to trace out. That's, that's Yellow trace is a clear write, that means it's overwritten at every, uh, every, every sweep. Now I'm going to enable a secondary, tra uh, secondary trace in pink. That is going to be a max hold, so it shows the maximum value at each frequency bin throughout all of the successive scans until we reset. And I set a display line to measure the amplitude. And you can see that it's minus 15 dBm, as we had expected. Now let's set up a lower amplitude sweep. We're going to just set this up for minus 50 dBm and see how that looks. So here you go, the generator front panel. You can see minus 50 dBm here, and we're sweeping on a nice 50 dBm as well. Now let's try battery-powered UPS. And so this is the same sweep that we originally had configured, only the uninterruptible power supply has been disconnected from the battery, or disconnected from the wall. So we are running off of battery power and that is being converted to a simulated sine wave. Here you can take a look. Here's our uninterruptible power supply. You can see it is not plugged in uh, to the wall and we're just running straight off of battery power. And um, we, here's our connection directly to the back of the unit, the, uh, the SSA 3021X connected here. Just using the standard power cord. Um, here I wanted to take a look at the model, but it was a little bit of a bad angle. So here's a little bit more information on that particular uninterruptible power supply if you're interested. And uh, so here is our minus 15 dB, and now we'll adjust down to minus 50 and we'll enable that third trace to do a max hold as well. And now we'll trace out that minus 50 dBm sweep as before. And uh, again, here we have that minus 50 dBm and we're doing uh, the same exact sweep. And you'll note, it doesn't look drastically different, if different at all. Um, we're gonna compare data in a little bit and uh, be able to take a closer look at it, but it seems to be operating well off of that battery powered UPS. And now we're going to go outside. We've got the SDG generator here to the right connected to the mains power by a, an extension cord, but I have the spectrum analyzer connected to the inverter on my pickup truck. And here we are running that same sweep minus, or I mean, I'm sorry, 530 kilohertz to 1.7 megahertz at minus 15 dBm as we had inside, the, uh, inside of our office building when connected to mains. 
and uh, the uninterruptible power supply un or disconnected from mains, so ba battery powered. You'll see that the data does look quite similar, if not identical, as we continue to build up that, that trace. Uh, again, yellow is going to be a clear write. It's going to overwrite every successive scan. And that pink is going to show us the max value in the max hold trace mode for this particular setup. And uh, here now we're going to adjust the amplitude of the uh, generator to minus 50 dBm here. And we'll let that do a few successive scans. I'll take a closer look at the settings. I apologize for the brightness here in Ohio, but uh, we had a, a sunny day <laughs> for once. <laughs> take a look at, at that data. So again, running off that inverter, uh, it seems to be collecting data quite well. Uh, very similar again to the to the information that we collected with the mains power as well as the uninterruptible power supply. Uh, and here we'll take a closer look at that scan. We can easily compare all of the data collected from the different power modes using the bitmap images. Here we've got mains of the sweep, uh, the uninterruptible power data, and then also the data collected using the inverter. Again, they look quite similar, but we can also collect the raw data, the CSV file data, for each of the individual sweeps and then compare them or overlay them in uh, a spreadsheet program. Here we've got the blue trace is the wall data or mains data, the orange is the UPS or uh, battery powered and the purple is the inverter collected data. Uh, that was the minus 15 dBm and this is the minus 50 dBm sweep and you can see there's quite a bit of correlation between all three different power modes uh, being used on the analyzer so we'll feel pretty good about the correlated data and we have a few more examples coming up. Now we can take a closer look at some real world data. I'm going to collect an AM radio station at 1.1 megahertz. Here, uh, here's my antenna, 1.1 well, meg. We're going to compare all of the data collected. Again, we're going to use the main power first, and then we're going to switch over to the uninterruptible power supply, which will be happening here. And again, 1.1 megahertz using the same antenna. Uh, this time, instead of mains power, we're collecting data powering the uh, or powering the spectrum analyzer directly off of the uninterruptible power supply and that uninterruptible power supply as shown here has been disconnected so we're actually operating off of the battery and inverter of the uninterrupted power uninterruptible power supply uh, for that data collection and uh, we're going to compare that data again with the inverter data from the, that collected out in the pickup truck which is shown here so, so again we're at the same 1.1 megahertz uh, using the same antenna. Uh, we're just using different power sources and we're looking at that raw data and again it overlays quite well. We're at 1.1 meg. Uh, we're actually seeing the sidebands and everything so the frequency and amplitudes all seem to compare quite nicely to one another but we'll definitely get a better look at that if we compare the raw CSV data. Here are some screenshots of that AM broadcast mains, UPS, and inverter and now we're going to switch over take a look at that raw CSV data that we collected and overlaid and again very good correlation. And so to summarize the remote powered SSA application an uninterruptible power supply with battery backup is convenient and usable uh, stay away from chopped waveforms or chopped outputs a uh, simulated sine wave is acceptable, but a true sine wave is going to be better. And to ensure accuracy, we recommend comparing data from MAMES-powered measurements along with data collected in your remote or portable power application. And the more data you collect and the more comparisons you get, the more comfortable you're going to be with the data that you have. And finally, here is our contact information. Thanks again for watching the video, and if you have any questions, please contact your local Siglin office. Have a great day.